Is, and contains drug use, frequent low-level coarse language, and some violence. bins per day is an achievable quota for an efficient employee. Well, you are efficient, aren't you? Sign it, Frank. No. Then you're out of a job. Endeavour Park, this is your local community radio, Rude Boy. Time for our deep breathing exercises, so suck in those cancer cubes, kiddies. On another beautiful day with no job, no in, no out, no up, no down, no hope, no life. Remember that pungent stench isn't entirely due to the crisis in your own personal freshness. It's that rotting industrial and commercial waste. Huge piles of stinking crap brought to you by Haywire Waste Management Services. Two, four, six, seven, it's where assassinate. Haywire! I'm on strike and I'm proud of it. And for all you deaf matters, tomorrow, Anita Malouf, the local Labour candidate, is going to be in telling us how Labour plans to make euthanasia compulsory in the next state election. That's tomorrow on 2EPR in Devon. Don't start me on bloody unions. I ain't trying to point out... One you. bloke has a notion he's there, the rest of them jump on the bandwagon like a mob of bloody sheep. No independent thought. The union is refusing to recommend a return to work until Haywire renegotiates the contract. That's what I'm saying. Give them a free hand, I'll be back and work tomorrow. All their members who got sacked or went out in sympathy are being paid from the strike fund. How are you making that? That's flat it. What? I thought some shocking stuff for Haywire. There's nothing worse than a right, Flatty. You would be in a much stronger negotiating position if you took my advice and joined the union. They won't let me join, will they? What? Have you asked them? Yeah, I asked them. They said, as I've been working for Haywire for five years, didn't join them. Well, bugger if they won't let me now, the bastards. They're usually more accommodating. Glad to hear it. So what are you doing? Well, I've lodged your claim for unfair dismissal with the Industrial Relations Commission. But it's not due to be listed for three weeks. I can't afford three weeks without pay. Bad enough sitting at home all day with Brian. Well, hey, we're going to have to negotiate sooner or later. Do you want to try and set up a meeting? I've seen rats here this morning. This big. Oh. Now, there was a case in America a few years ago. Um, his sisters never took out their garbage. After a while, the neighbours complained about the smell, and when they finally broke into the house, there was garbage stashed to the ceiling. And they'd carved tunnels through it to get around. Anyone got anything constructive to suggest? Council. They won't pick up from an industrial zone. And I agree, we can't just sort of build up. It's unsanitary. Getting a headache from the smell. Well, until the strike's over, someone's just going to have to take the garbage to the tip every day. Oh, no. Oh, 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 you got a better idea? I think it's a splendid idea. 
In fact, why don't we start alphabetically? Anita. Sorry, I'm moving my stuff into Malcolm's this afternoon. Of course, I'd be only too happy. Of course. But I've got a splitting headache. Oh. Well, looks like you've drawn the short straw, mate. I don't think so. Uh, N for Nick, S for Sharon, W for Warren. You're next. M is before N. Malcolm. <laughs> Warren. Zesty fish and mango curry surprise. Bloody cookery courses. Are you coming to give me a hand with my stuff? I'll have to dump this stuff first, won't I? You do still want me to move in? Of course I do. It's just Mum and Dad have been a bit... Oh, they'll get used to the idea. I want you living in my house with me. Me too. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> mm -hmm. G'day, Anita. You all set for tomorrow? Of course I am. I'm looking forward to it. Get there a little bit before 10 so we can figure out what we're going to talk about. Gave you a bit of a plug this morning, here. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, Brian's the one I've been telling you about. He's interviewing me tomorrow on community radio. Yeah, I know. Brian? Rude boy. Rude boy? Oh, what you been up to? What have I been up to? You've been eating flathead. <laughs> Malcolm, Dad. Oh, no. Not for me, thanks. I'm trying not to drink at the moment. Dad wants to propose a toast. Oh, well, right, in that case. Today, your mother and I are sad. But at the same time, we are happy. Looks are not important in a man. It's what's in his heart that matters. A man is like a fine cheese. He ripens slowly. He loses the vigor of his youth, the brashness. He becomes more mellow and mature. Anita has chosen Malcolm, and she has chosen wisely. To Anita and Malcolm, may they be happy together. Mabruk. 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 Oh, can you turn that down? Why? Bloody after tea. You'd have to turn it off. Oh, shit, anyway. Where'd all them come from? Radio station? What are they doing here? I stole them. Well, take them back. What are you going to dob me in? Jesus, son, I don't understand you. I listen to you every morning. You got a brain, a bloody good brain, better than mine. Throw it away. How's Cooper Petey? You read any more about that stuff? Huh? What? I don't know. Go on one day. Yeah, right. I am. I'm going. Just get on the road and drive. Just drive until I get there. Old bloody town underground. Man can escape there easy. No worries. <laughs> a man is like a fine cheese. Where do you get that from? 
Dad likes making speeches. <laughs> he thinks I'm old. An 80% milk fat. Well, I've always been partial to a nice piece of brie. Mm. How do you feel about Cracker Barrel? Even better. <laughs> I am so glad you are here. And now, live with the rude boy. No party machine, she has come alone to be basted and grilled fresco. The Labour Party's very own Sal Manella, the body McPherson. Time to talk turkey with the local Labour candidate, Anita Maloof. Sal Manella, the body McPherson? The main point in the garbage dispute is a company forcing employees to sign individual contracts rather than engage in a collective bargaining process. This is just a taste of what workers can expect under the Coalition's Industrial Relations Package. Absolutely bloody right. It's also another example of the federal government attempting to undermine the pillars that have long protected and advanced wages and conditions. Is that a bite on your neck? I'm sorry? Just there. Is, is, that, is that a love bite? I thought we were discussing industrial relations. Well, let's just talk about the bite for a bit. Now, is that what you get fraternising with the left wing? It's not a political issue. Yeah, but you can get one of those love bites from some of the members of the left wing. <sighs> some of the more rabid members, probably. Have you had your tetanus shot? If we could get back to the garbage dispute. Well, that's a connection, isn't it? I'm sorry? <laughs> You've been indulging in a full and frank exchange of views. Well, I enjoy a robust debate. And who have you been, um, robust with? No comment. No comment is necessary. Listeners, the man who marked Anita Maloof's neck was frolicking in the garbage at the Endeavour Park Legal Centre yesterday. I know because I saw him. He's a rubbish wrangler with a blue Ford sedan full of garbage. A scrawny, bald-headed, bearded lawyer. Now with fine taste for young labour and absolutely craving flathead. True or false? <laughs> false. He doesn't eat flathead. Well, if he doesn't eat the flathead, what does he do with the flathead in the privacy of his own home? Is he a groper? Or more of a flounder? <laughs> Actually, no. He's more of a... a white pointer, like a big chunky white pointer. Maybe a hammerhead. <laughs> Just cruises around, munching the mullet, chewing the clam, trawling for a bit of snapper. He's a garbage eating machine. Die if he stops moving. That about sum him up, darling, does it? The world is disintegrating, Mr. Lucas. And as it disintegrates, inefficiency is becoming more and more widespread. Hence, waste is becoming more widespread. And as society breaks down, its ability to process that waste is decreasing at a geometric rate. If we could get back to this contract. It's all in Mr Haywire's book. It proves that without the assiduous husbandry of resources, the world will inevitably drown in its own excrement. That's uh, no reason for dismissing Frank from his job. Well, we're more than happy to reinstate him. All he has to do is sign the contract. Under that contract, if he doesn't meet your performance quotas, he doesn't get his full entitlement of holidays or sick leave. Frank didn't find that a problem. I do. So does the IRC. So does the union. Frank's not a member of the union. Now, your main objection was the minimum quota of 900 bins to qualify for the cash bonus. That's right. So what would you deem an acceptable number? 600. The quota for the bonus is irrelevant. There are much more basic issues that have to be negotiated first. The holiday and sick leave quotas are nothing. I can make it easy. You don't have to make them. Holidays and sick leave are guaranteed by law. If he feels the quotas for the incentives are reachable, then I don't see a problem. Maybe we should talk about this outside. Don't be a bloody idiot. I signed that. I'm back at work tomorrow. Listen. An employer has to give an employee holidays and sick leave. You got that? Hey, why has to give them to you? No strings, no quotas. You sign this, you're agreeing to throw that away. I can make those quotas. You don't know that. You could slip and break your leg or you could be kidnapped by bloody aliens. It doesn't matter. Unless you meet those quotas, you get nothing. And you have no right of appeal because it's in the contract. There's no award safety net and, and you haven't even got a union you can turn to. Look, I just want to get back to work. Yeah, yeah, I know that. No, you don't know that. I've got bills. 
And you're not trapped in your own bloody house with a kid that hates everything. No, I'm not. Well, it's not bloody pretty. And I don't know how to make things better. Good, well, let me try and get your appeal moved forward. Your complaint will be upheld. Hey, will have to reinstate you. They'll have to compensate you. And they'll have to negotiate with you about a proper contract. Now, don't piss it away by signing this. Look, all I want is my bloody job back. That's not asking too much. All right. See what you can do. Good interview this morning. Thanks. You handled that kid well. What do you think, Mel? Drink, Barry, or are you still on the wagon? I'm still there, mate, but you go right ahead. Thanks. I will. I'd like to I'll get you back on that show again. Do you think it's worth it? This kid, what's his name? The Rude Boy. He's got a fair audience. Have a look at the demographics. See, kids mainly, late teens, early 20s, unemployed, pissed off. And they're the ones that are tuning in. They've got bugger all else to do. I don't think they tune into the rude boy to hear about politics. I didn't tune in to hear him out. She was a trout porker either, but he did, and it worked. They seem to be mostly male. Well, they are. So, next time, play with him a bit more. Make it into a flirt piece. I'm a politician, not a bimbo. I'm not asking you to jerk him off. I'm asking you to use your personality. It's an asset. Now go on here and sell yourself to these kids. Be appealing. I mean, you can be appealing. All right. Good. Really cruisy gear, man. It's hydro. Cons. Yeah. Hey, boys. It's not your mother. What's this? A movie? Why is he chasing her? So he can kill her. What for? What's she done? Nothing. Shut up! You look at me when you talk to me. You're stoned. Yeah, and you're pissed, so shut up. Don't you talk to me like that, you little shit! I've had a gut for your attitude! Oh. Get your hands off me! Let go of me! Piss off, all right? We're just hey, watching the movie. Yeah, the shit! Bloody maniac! You know about shit? What have you done for your days? All shit! At least I work for a living. So what? Hey, it's your kind, Brian. I just want to help you, son. You want to help me, Dad? You can get me a job hauling shit. You can get me a wife and a kid. And maybe even a little surprise when the wife pisses off, leaving a note in the meatloaf saying she can do it better. That's enough. And I'm going to bring my kid up, boring the shit out of him about my dream about Cooper Petey. I dream about going to a big hole in the ground. And that's pretty funny, because that's the same hole that I fill the shit up that I haul all day. Hey, mate, you want a cone? <laughs> Get out. Get out of the lot of you. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's 7.45 and you're with Howard Stein through till nine, filling in for the rude boy. He's not feeling too chipper on this beautiful Endeavour Park morning, so let's cheer him up. Today's time. I wonder how the death metalers feel about Howard Stein. I think they'd rather have the rude boy. <laughs> Are you really going to go on his show again? Why not? Oh. You heard what Barry said. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. it won't be like yesterday. No, that's not what I'm concerned about. What is it then? You know what it is. He didn't specifically tell me not to mention my platform. Oh, don't be so naive. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using personality to attract votes. Fine-tuning your approach in order to maximise your appeal is common practice for every politician. Yes, that's true. There you are, then. There's a wet T-shirt contest at the club on Friday. Should I stick your name down for it? Or do you want to do that? Don't be ridiculous. I was trying to be. It's entirely different and you know it. It's using your assets to get votes. Get off your high horse, Malcolm. You were never a candidate. I don't believe that people are so stupid or stoned or apathetic that they don't want to know about issues affecting them, and you don't believe that either. I want to win. He's changing you. Barry knows what he's doing, and I don't have a problem with him. Okay. Fine. It violates our enterprise agreement. Oh, shit. It does. We got legal advice. From her, Warren. Warren. Give it to me. Warren says hauling away the garbage should be classified as dangerous work. Which we're not trained to do. There are serious health risks involved. Rat bites, cuts, infections. Needle stick injuries. He reckons we need the full protection gear. The enterprise agreement is very clear, Mel. So you think we should just leave all our garbage out there to pile up? No, I don't. Then what do you suggest? I'm simply suggesting we shouldn't break our own enterprise agreement. One in which you were instrumental in negotiating. Warren, how long have you been working here? Well, not as long as you, but... No one's been here as long as me. I don't think that's the issue. I've been reading this book. It says the world is going to drown in its own excrement. The world might, but my legal centre isn't. Because if I have to do it myself, I will. I'll take the garbage, put it in the boot of the car, and I'll take it away every day until the strike is over. Is that all right with everyone? It makes you a scab. Feeling better, Malcolm? What are you doing here? I need her around. She's busy. Try after work. Leave her alone, Barry. You're the one who got me to take her on the first place. My mistake. Mate, your mistake is thinking that she's the originalist Jesus just because you're rooting her. I'm not rooting her. Oh, shit, Malky. You stupid bastard. You and Jim Cairns, why do we have to have both of you? Anita's not happy about going on that show again. I know she isn't, but she's going to do it. She doesn't need to. Yes, she does. It is a juvenile stunt. She's not going to get any votes out of it. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. It's not the point. The point is that she's willing to have a go because it might help her win. Even if she compromises herself. Especially if she compromises herself. It'll be that much easier next time. She trusts you. God knows why. You're too soft for this game, Malka. You always have been. Be kind to yourself, dump her, and do it quick. Where did you stay last night? Oh, at a mate's place. Are you all right? Dad got pissed. Pretty funny, eh? No. No, my mates thought it was. They just sat around laughing their heads off. You know what the funniest thing is? I can't see anything funny. You know what? You need to lighten up, Anita. You take things too seriously. Life's just a big joke. Life's pretty funny. And the funniest thing is I've got another 60 years of it. Brian. Help me. Tell me what I can do. I can't give you any legal advice. Can't you? You know your father's a client of the centre. We can't represent you both. 
No, not with Flathead being Dad's lawyer. Wouldn't want you up against your boyfriend now, would we? I'm going to write down the number of another legal centre for you. No. It's just over in Dwyer. I don't want a number of another legal centre in Dwyer. I want you to help me. I can't. I really can't. I'm sorry. I want you to let me come on your show again. Can I do that? Yeah. And I want to give you the phone number and address of the legal center in Dwyer. Can I do that too? See you later. Okay, I won't be long. Take your time. I'm going to a branch meeting anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, about this morning, you know. I saw Brian today. Oh, yeah? And? His father assaulted him last night. He wanted some advice. Don't worry, I referred him to Dwyer. It's going to be all right? Yeah. I'm going on a show on Friday. I brought some things Anita left at home. A dress, some photos. Uh, she's at a meeting, Mariam. I don't know when she'll be back. I used to go pretty late. Joe's on night shift. I was hoping she'd be here. Why don't you stay for a drink? Seems pointless going home to an empty house. A drink would be nice. A summons? Your son's applied for an AVO, Mr Skaggs. An apprehended violence order? You're being summoned to appear in court this Friday. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, I understand. Thanks. This is the last one. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I'm hungry. And one thumb's eating all my nuts. I don't want nuts. I want a Big Mac. Mm. Can I tell you something? Sure. I'm not telling you because you're with Anita. I'm telling you because I like you. <laughs> I have never been to McDonald's. Not even the drive through Joe won't take me. It's true. Everybody's been to McDonald's. Everybody except me. I'll never get to McDonald's now. Gosh, you will. No, I won't. McDonald's is family. McDonald's is where you take your kids. You can have parties there. You can see the clown. You can meet the Hamburglar. I don't have any kids anymore. I'm just an old woman with fat ankles and no kids. I'd have loved to have had kids. Nita and I are going to have kids. We're going to have lots of them. We're going to have eight. More the merrier. When? As soon as I talk her into it. That talk. You don't have to talk. You think Joe ever talked to me? No. 
Oh, he just uh, um, <laughs> bothered some kids. It's nothing to it. We're going to have kids. And when we do, we're going to take you to McDonald's. My daughter has struck oil. Get your shoes on. Oh, but where are they? I don't know, but we're going to take you to McDonald's right now. La darling! You're just in time. As soon as your mother finds her shoes, we're all going to McDonald's. Are you going to throw up again? I'm all right. I'm sorry about your car. Don't worry about it. I don't blame Malcolm. Oh, he's a lovely. I'm not going to blame him. I'm going to kill him. He's going to make me a grandmother. I don't think so. He is. You're going to have children at last. Am I? Lots and lots of them. Shh. Don't tell him I told you. It's going to be a surprise. Don't worry. Mama's the word. What are you doing? Uh, helping you unpack. Leave it. Oh, I'm almost finished. Leave it, Malcolm. Let's get to bed. Um, Jesus, Malcolm. Why did you say that to my mother? Did you mean it? <sighs> what if I did? <laughs> did you mean it or not? I've thought about it. Haven't you? No. Not at all? Mum and Dad always wanted me to be a good little Maronite girl. Get married, have kids. You know how long I've been fighting that. Yeah. Well, I was winning. I was. I know I was because I'd listened to my mother on the phone and she stopped apologising for the fact that I didn't have a boyfriend and started talking about how well I was doing. I thought you supported that. I, I do support it. Then why did you say that to my mother? Because I'm 45 years old. And all I've got is a legal centre full of garbage. No, it's not Howard Stein until nine. It's the rude boy. That's why Fancy's back and he's mad. I'm putting a price on the head of Howard Stein. So bring me the head of Howard Stein. Bring it right here and I'll put my drink in it. And we'll crank up staying alive. We'll make head cheese and we'll drink coke out of the empty head of Howard Stein. And we'll invite my dad to the party because he does great party tricks. He beats the crap out of people. He beat the crap out of me two days ago. But I guess that's what kids need today. A little bit of discipline, a good role model. So when I have kids, I'm going to beat the crap out of them too. Just to make sure yeah, that they turn out like this useless whining mac. Where are they? Dad's looking forward to having lots of little lawyers in the family. Oh, don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll call him. I think you've talked to my parents enough. I'll sort it out tonight. What are you going to say to them? The truth? That you got so pissed you promised them hordes of grandchildren I knew nothing about. He told everybody I beat the shit out of him. Did you? I suppose I did. But the shits. Never hit him before. 
I don't know what to do, I don't know what to say anymore. What about this thing? I don't think there's much you can do about it. He's my son. You did assault him. If he can show that he's afraid of you, the order will be granted. And if you break it, it's a criminal offence, and you could be up for two years in jail and a $5,000 fine. I'm a bloody criminal if I got him my own kid. If the order's enforced. Oh, that's bullshit. Look, I brought Brian up by myself. Fifteen years. Fifteen years I never once took the doll. Brought him up straight. Taught him respect. You listen to me? Yeah, I'm listening. Did me best. It's a bloody good job. Oh, that's bullshit. I did a shit job. Maybe you could talk to him. He might change his mind. What about my unfair dismissal claim? The IRC won't hear it any earlier. I'm sorry. I'm gonna see Haywire this morning. Frank. There's nothing you can do or say will stop me. I just wanna work. I've had enough. I wanna work hard, long hours, and not think. Maybe things will work out. Hey, Harry! Throw us in! So, you wanna be a scab? That'd be about your form, wouldn't it? Yeah, Skaggs. Hayway's not letting anyone in. The bass has locked us out till we sign. And we're not letting anyone in either. So piss off. Yeah, piss off, Skaggs. Don't come back. Yeah, yeah. piss off. Yeah. Piss off, Skaggs. Scab. Hey, Skaggs! Next time you see that kid of yours, you tell him to quit having a go at us. Because if he don't, the next time you beat him up, we'll give you a hand. <laughs> Just grab him some of my stuff. You okay? Yeah, brilliant. Leaving. What's it look like? Where are you going? Mate's place. No point sticking around here, is there? I suppose not. I must point to anything. You were right. No, you were right. I was wrong. All this time trying to do the right thing and uh, being in the upright, giving you what you wanted, house, family. Oh, what happens? I'm not even allowed to haul shit anymore. Sorry, son. Yeah. Oh, not just for hitting you. For all this, everything. I'm sorry. You're full of shit. I'll miss you. Give us 50 bucks. What for? The bong's no good without having something to put in it. Hmm? The blokes at Haywire aren't too happy about what you've been saying about them on the radio. Is that right? They said you should keep it up. The next time I beat you up, I'll give me a hand. Stuff them. Just passing it on. Cheers. Oh, um, don't think that I'm going to be dropping the AVO on you. Never enter me head. See ya. Yeah, see that. It's been real.
And now it's time for the Dead Pet Society. This week features little nine-year-old Tammy O'Toole and her little pet budgie Marvin. Well, sadly, Marvin died last week when his pancreas exploded. So Tammy put him out in the rubbish and Tammy reckons he's still there. She says she can smell him. And so can you, listeners. One, two, three, big whiff. Mmm, taste the fragrance of Marvin. Brought to you by the hard-working lads down at Haywire Waste Management Services. Little bastard. She walks, she talks, even her arms move. Pull a little string and she says, Hi, my name's Anita Malouf and I'm your local Labour candidate. What are you doing? Dad? 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 I shouldn't have gone back on his show. Barry will be pleased. We should get more than 50 votes out of that. Don't. Is this going to work out? It's just... we don't seem to want the same things. I don't know what I want. I used to think I knew what I wanted. I thought I knew what I wanted with Lorna. Five years later, she walked out on me because I wanted something else. I wanted that legal centre, so I built it. And it took everything. My time, my energy. My emotions. I shut down, Anita. I didn't feel pleasure in things. Like, not like I used to. I don't know what I felt. <laughs> Dread, mostly. Because I was middle-aged and every day I was thinking more about 
things other men had that I didn't. A wife, kids, all the boring, stupid things that uh, I didn't need because I had ideals to chase. <laughs> Except they weren't ideals. I was frightened. Frightened of joy. Commitment. Frightened of life. I built this orderly, sterile world around myself where I'd go to work, come home, put out the garbage. I don't know whether it's going to work out, but I want it. And I need you so badly. Don't go. Fall for you 